Good morning. We are getting ready to start here with EdCamp Global. And I'm looking for a couple of people that were going to join me on the air before we get started. I see I've got Walt and Ashley. Welcome. And Debbie Butler, welcome. Matthew, welcome. Carrie, welcome. We're starting to get a nice little group here. I think there's about a minute delay. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to thank EdCamp Global for doing a great job getting everything set up and advertising and putting together the, the global hangout. I've got some questions for us. So I'm going to post the questions one at a time and um, feel free to uh, put your response in and I'll read them and we can talk a little bit about gamification in the classroom. My name is Marlena Heburn and I'm returning to the classroom after about five years being out of the classroom working at the district office in curriculum and I'll be teaching sixth grade next year and I've been looking into gamification as a way to motivate my students in the classroom. So that's just my background where I'm coming from. And uh, Ashley says, I teach third grade in Texas. I have no background in gamification, but I'm interested in learning. Well, you're in the right place, Ashley, because maybe we'll learn a little bit together. All right, let's see if I can share my first screen up here. And let's see, that's the wrong slide. So hold on just a minute. Hold on, we're getting that ready to go. Okay, what is gamification? So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna get there here in a second, gamification. What is gamification? So go ahead and share your thoughts in the comment stream and let's talk a little bit about what gamification is. All right, any thoughts, anybody? It might be a little uh, soon here. I'm still waiting for Amy to join in with me. Um, but I think we can go ahead and talk about this. So what is gamification? So uh, from what I've been able to gather and, and what I've looked into so far, is gamification is pulling in and using the elements of game in your classroom. So thinking about, oh, can you hear me now? I think that maybe my sound was not working. So um, let, I'm gonna back up just a little bit because I think my sound was not plugged in all the way. And um, I'm sorry, I thank you for being patient. I'm just learning Google Hangouts as many of you are as well. So here we are today for gamification in the classroom. My name is Marlena Heburn and I um, will be teaching sixth grade next year after a couple of years in the curriculum department of my district. And so I've been looking into gamification over the summer and I'm looking for ways I can use it in my classroom. So what is gamification? Gamification is using the elements of game in the classroom. So thinking about uh, how a game is set up, how the rules are set up, how it's uh, uh, an environment that includes the kids rather than it's a teacher oriented environment telling the kids what to do and so that's kind of how i look at it does anybody have anything they'd like to comment and add to to the uh, thoughts about what gamification is okay i don't see any thoughts coming in yet so
So um, Jennifer says providing badges and game-like elements to learning. And oh, Amy, there's Amy. Hi, Amy. Um, Amy, I was hoping to get you in on the chat with me. Amy says, I can hear, okay, that's good. Um, oh, and Amy is from Modesto. Amy, let me see if I can uh, invite you. I'm not sure that I can invite you from here. Chat. Okay, we're gonna come back to Amy in a little bit. So uh, just keep commenting, Amy, that's great. Um, Jennifer says, from San Diego, she teaches sixth grade. Um, Rosina says, do you know of any free game-based learning websites? I know of um, MAGA High for Math. Um, are, you know what, I have a couple that I'm gonna share a little bit later in the, in the discussion, so hang in there and we'll come back to that question. Rosina, um, Rosina also says, I use academics for math games. And Matthew says, uh, <laughs> Matt says, he's uh, Matt, nerd, DC, audio and video are good. Great job. Thank you, Matthew, for that feedback. So, um, Amy, I think you're in the right area for chat, yes. So gamification, using the game elements in the classroom. And um, I, think, I think what really helped me understand what it was was someone yesterday uh, told me that if you think about setting up your class syllabus in, uh, in like a class, uh, instead of class rules and a class syllabus of the teachers doing this and this and this and you're going to do this and as a student you come on time and you bring your pencils and you're prepared for class, you set that syllabus up to be like the rules of the game. How do you win? What's the strategy for winning in the game? And the classroom is the game. And engage the kids that way. I really like that concept of uh, gamification. But there's a lot of other ways to provide, to promote gamification in the classroom. And so let's go to our next uh, slide here. Let me pull up my next slide. Got lost here on my screen somewhere. Where'd you go, slide? So are there different types of gamified activities? Anybody want to comment what they think, different kinds of gamified activities? We see a couple down here. I saw badges. Uh, Amy says adding game elements to a process. Um, hi, Jennifer. Jennifer, uh, welcome Jennifer from San Diego. So are there different kind, types of gamified activities? Kahoot, that's a good one, Kahoot. Uh, Kahoot lets the kids, uh, the teacher pose a question and then the kids kind of race to answer it and it keeps track of their, their time. That's a great, a great uh, simple app for gamifying it. An activity and it's a great use for uh, reviewing for a, a test or something like that. Anybody else would like to contribute a thought? Um, okay, this one, this one here, um, I am not familiar with that one. Rosalina, could you tell us a little bit about it? And while she's typing, um, Rosina also says leaderboards. Leaderboards, that's a great way uh, to show kids um, who's up, you know, especially if they're in uh, using a program like ScootPad or Moby Max, and they, those often come with built-in leaderboards. I suppose you could do a leaderboard in your classroom, um, not necessarily a technology leaderboard, but you could have uh, leaderboards put up in your room. There is a delay in the response, Amy, yes. So do I need to, I guess I need to slow down a little bit, huh? Amy says for number two, giving points for activities. Making assessments in a game format, fighting uh, the big boss, fighting the big boss, making your assessments in a game format. Oh, good suggestion, Debbie. I like that. Providing, Jennifer says, providing badges and game lock -like elements to learning. 
seedlings are pouring in, providing points. Um, Rosalina says, it is a math website tied to the Common Core and the kids compete against each other all over the world. Wow, that's really cool. So content, uh, she says, math, Common Core, so math. And Amy says, yes, Kahoot. My students love Kahoot. I would consider that game-based learning more than gamification. She's probably right. Uh, Amy, do you wanna talk about the difference between game-based learning and gamification? Edmodo has that. Uh, Rosalina says Edmodo has that. I'm going to put up here also for a few minutes the address to Kahoot. Okay, so I'm just waiting for the delay to happen so that people can respond. And let's, um, let's go ahead and move to the question number three. How can we, um, you know, before we go to question number three, though, let's skip because I think that would be more timely coming down here. Um, let's see, I'm going through some good questions here. Why do we think gamification works? So why do we think kids are so engaged in gamification? What is, what is the big thing for them? I'm gonna give you a minute to answer that. Why do we think gamification works? I think there's, I don't know the research. Um, I'm going to come back to that a little bit later if anybody has any research that they found on it. Just what I've been hearing from people, that they say it works and that kids like it, kids are engaged in it. Um, Walt, I know that you had something that you talked to me about um, kids responding to rewards. Maybe you could uh, write something about that for us. I'm waiting for the delay response. If you have just joined us, go ahead and jump in the chat and introduce yourself and say where you're from. It's just kind of fun to see where everybody is joining in from. Um, kids are competitive and motivation, says Jennifer. Um, you're right. I think kids, they, they like, they buy into that competitive mode about uh, trying to beat other kids or, or stay in the game. Gamification is adding game elements to a process. Game-based learning is bringing a game into the environment. For example, the classroom. Good input, Amy. Thank you. And uh, Sharon just joined us from Texas. Welcome, Sharon. Um, Debbie Butler says, uh, gamification appeals to their competitive natures and they want to excel. You know, I like that, Debbie, because I do think that every kid wants to excel. I think they don't always know how. And I think they get discouraged, but I think that the bottom line is that they do want to excel. Don't we all? We all want to be able to do something well and be recognized for our efforts. Good point. Um, Amy says, reality is broken. Why games make us better and how they can change the world. Is that an, is that an article? And Amy, I'm curious.
Uh, Jennifer says, immediate uh, gratification of receiving an award, a points or badges. Right, I, yeah, I think that's very true. They, they can know right away if they were on target, if they weren't on target, so it's feedback for them. Uh, Rosina says, kids love Minecraft. And this lab, game lab, Kudu Game Lab and Junior Scratch. I don't know that. Uh, that's a new one for me, Kudu Game Lab. In fact, I'm writing that one down. K-U-D-U-G-A-M-E-L-A-B. Kudu Game Lab. I'll have to check that one out. I don't know that one. Can you tell us about it? Um, Sharon says, I'm not sure how gamification works. I'm here to learn as much as possible. I think that it would be very engaging to students. Sharon, I don't know exactly how it works either. I just know that when we give kids instant feedback through points or through some kind of an achievement level, we're giving them feedback about their process, about their, about their effort and their learning. And then we're, they, they are so motivated by the gaming that they want the next level. They want to achieve the next level or to get the next badge. I just think it, it's motivational for them. I think that's why it works. Amy says, I'm sorry, the reality is broken went with my other comment. It is Jane McGongle's book. She also has a TED Talk. Okay, great to know. We'll have to check that one out. You know, the, uh, the research, you know, the learning that we do goes on after the, after the uh, Google Hangout as well. Okay. Thank you, Jean, uh, Amy. And here, Rosina put up the web link here to the Kudo Game Lab. And I see a couple more up here. You know, one way to capture these real quick, I, I'm hoping this, the, I, I'm not familiar that the chat will be available after. I would think it would be, but just in case it's not, you can always screenshot those and capture them. So um, Rosina also says Dreambox. There's the link for Dreambox, www.dreambox.com. No tricky spellings on that one. And, oh, Steady Island. I've heard about Steady Island. Okay. Skills. Um, Rosina says kids are able to practice basic skills and reinforce skills that they are weak in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next question here. And um, let's go. And I do have a really cool website that I'm going to share with you shortly. Um, how can we use badges in the classroom? Using badges is one way to gamify a classroom. I think there's more than one way to do it, but badges is one way. We kind of talked about that, letting kids level up. I see badges as, I see badges being used in a couple of different ways. One way is to actually give the kids sets of skills. I think of Girl Scouts. My girl, I have two girls and they were really involved in Girl Scouts. And when they went to earn a badge, there were different elements that they had to do and explore in order to earn that badge. There was always a piece in the skills that had to do with um, careers. So some kind of a career link to the skills they were learning. And then there would usually be a, a leadership piece in that. And then there were certain skills they would have to do. So say they were working on a, a movie badge making movies they would have to look at some of the careers related to making movies and then they would have to um, make a movie and then they would have to demonstrate their skills and, a, and their ability to be able to edit a movie and to do those kinds of things when they were able to check off those six or seven items then they earn the badge so i look at badges in the classroom in a very similar way that kids maybe uh, maybe it's a math badge the kids have demonstrated their ability to um, to multiply decimals and to demonstrate their ability to do that and maybe four or five other math skills and then they earn a math badge because they've, sh they've demonstrated their ability in that area. So that's how I see badges being used. I really liked that piece of the um, 
career tie. And I think that we should be tying careers in everything we do whenever we can do it, even, even at all grade levels, even down to kindergarten. Because kids get into high school and you know, my two girls, one of them knew what she wanted to do and the other one had no idea what she wanted to do. And it's been much easier for the one that knew what she wanted to do. But I think that exploring those careers early in their, in their school career will help them start to define what, what they're interested in when they get older. And if we're preparing kids for college and career readiness, I think knowing what you want to do is a piece of that. So I like that tie-in to that. Okay, I'm going to read some of these comments that came in while I was talking. Uh, oh, Jennifer says, has anyone used Classcraft? You know, I'm going to put you on hold on that one, Jennifer, because I am going to address that one coming up in just a little bit. And Amy says, I, uh, let's see, we already did that one. Um, Amy says from Jane, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, McGongle's book, paraphrase, unnecessary obstacles increase self-motivation, provoke interest and creativity, and help us work at the very edge of our abilities. Ooh, unnecessary obstacles. So I'm thinking that might be things like, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, like um, limited supplies. Not no supplies, but maybe limited supplies. Or um, uh, just uh, resor limited of resources or Hmm. I'm thinking when the kids are doing projects and they have to, there's an obstacle in the way and they have to brainstorm and come up with a solution for getting through that. Or maybe in engineering design, it's, oh, that design didn't work because it didn't work because we did something that couldn't function. So we had to uh, uh, re-engineer it. So that's an interesting idea. I, haven't, I hadn't really thought of that before. Thank you for sharing that, Amy. Um, and Amy says, I believe 3D Game Lab is really good with task-based learning, quests and badges, 3D Game Lab. I'm also writing that one down because I've heard of that and I haven't really looked at it at all. Um, Amy says, sure, I'm at, oh, she's sharing her Twitter there. So there you go. Go ahead and copy down her, a.k.a. Mrs. P, <laughs> I like that, AKA, your other reality. Um, okay. uh, Jennifer says, I'm planning on using Classcraft this year. Get a referral from someone so you can get two free months. Okay, well, you know what? Being that everyone is very interested in Classcraft, uh, let's skip up to that in just a second here. We'll go to that one next. Um, Jennifer says another website to make badges, make badges, make badge.es slash badge.html. Yeah, it's great. You can make electronic badges. Um, one thing that I was thinking about badges, though, is, and I'd love some feedback from the group on this, that I was struggling in, in my classroom this coming year, is for students who are not as strong. Because I remember in my elementary school years, the teacher would put, you know, we used to do SRAs in those days, and the teacher would post a chart, and if you finished an SRA level, you got a sticker on the chart. And sometimes some kids would be, you know, stickers all the way across the chart, and other times kids would have like two stickers. And I always thought, you know, I was a, I was a good reader. I hated SRA personally, but I was a good reader, so uh, that didn't bother me too much personally, but I was worried about those kids that only had two stickers up there and how they look compared to the class and how they felt. So I've, I've wondered about badges that when we award a badge to kids and, and we're, we're displaying that in the classroom. And so this one little kid who works so hard, and maybe he's even a special ed kid, he works so hard at what he does. And by golly, he's, he's accomplished two badges. And those are sitting next to the board, next to the kid who has 35 badges. And so how to support, that's what I want to know, how to support that kid. And, and one thing I'm wondering is maybe the badges shouldn't be displayed publicly. Maybe the badges should be displayed in their own personal accounts so that they can track them and watch them. And it's more of a personal uh, goal than public. I don't know. I'm, I'm certainly curious what people think about that, if anybody wants to share that. 
Um, Amy says, I use gamification reward effort, not mastery. Oh, I like that, Amy. Maybe that's the way to get around it is to focus on the effort and not the mastery. Um, Amy. Amy says, no, and no unnecessary obstacles. I have to get a bird between pipes to get points. Oh, I see. I have to get a bird between pipes to get points. I'll spend hours doing this, even though it is unnecessary. So how much more powerful is it when the result is learning? Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying, um, what I think you're saying is, so say, for example, we're using badges and to earn the badge, we have to figure out the multiplication of fractions. And so that is the obstacle, the unnecessary obstacle maybe is, so correct me if I'm wrong on that, I'm still trying to understand. But I like the idea. Um, Jennifer says, I like the idea of making badges during a project. Each badge will represent a different task during that pro project. They don't need to go in order, but it'll be personalized to what they want to work on. I do like that because I want to give my kids choice because I think they buy in more when there's choice. Rosina says, by then, that gets kids to move away from competition. Right, and I, I don't know, I mean, I know we always learn from our own personal experiences, although that's not necessarily the best guiding light for operating in a classroom, but from my own personal experiences, I always did better when I was competing against myself and not against other people. And I think there's different kinds of kids. Some kids like to compete against other people and some kids will thrive competing against themselves. Uh, okay, let me run through some of these questions real quick and get caught up and then we're gonna move to class craft. Kids play games all the time. I love Jane McGungle's talk book where she discusses how games are intentional challenges. I think. Okay, Carrie, I see a new person here. Or I know I already welcomed Carrie. Um, oh, here we go. Jennifer says, make badges with Google Sheets. And Alice Keeler, I do know Alice Keeler. She has awesome resources and she is the master of Google Sheets, that's for sure. So she has a, a little tutorial on her website. If you search Alice Keeler, Dot com, you will find her with no problem. Uh, Jennifer says she's used Class Dojo for behavior management using a point system. Uh, we already did this one, fighting the boss. Okay, let's go to Class Craft because I think there's some interest. Class Craft, I came across it this summer and I, I put up a little slide here that we can share. So, Class Craft is a as a program and what's really cool about it, it, it makes the classroom the game. So the kids have avatars, they choose one of these avatars and they can kind of create it and personalize it. And you put them in groups of about six kids in a group and they're in that group for the entire year and the kids actually sign an agreement at the beginning of the year that says they agree once they enter the game to be in the game for the full year. And then excuse me, according to class craft suggestions is that if the kids don't want to play the game, then that's fine. Don't force them. You want the kids in a game that want to be in the game. And normally what will happen is over the course of the next couple of weeks, the other games, the other kids get so into it that those stragglers decide to join. But the kids, uh, the class becomes the game. So Basically, the class craft is just a shell of keeping track of the points that kids earn. And they can earn gold, and they can earn points, and they can earn um, uh, life points. So how it works is, is, say, kids are coming to class on time, and you can reward them you know, five points every day for participation in class and being on time and being prepared. So they earn points. You can also award them points for doing well on tests or quizzes. Um, for helping each other out in their team, for supporting each other, for anything that you want. You can also reward them with anything that you want. So you could set rewards that say, you know, so many points, you have lunch with the teacher, you know, whatever you want to have as a reward, extra recess time or something, whatever you want. But when, when one of the teammates 
suppose uh, he's been losing points or she's been losing points and they get to the point where they die, the team has to give them their life points to resurrect that person. So, so there's a lot of motivation for, for the team to help each other out and to collaborate and coordinate what they're doing because they don't want to give up their life points to help the other person, but they're forced to, they have no choice to do that. So they have to help their teammate. And so therefore the next day, they're going to ask that teammate, hey, do you have your homework today? Because we don't want you to lose any points. And they begin to support each other that way. So that's really the power in class craft is getting the kids to support each other because they've become this team that's going to work together. And um, I'm really excited. I'm going to use this this summer. It looks like they've changed their pricing plan. So there is a free version and then the, the, uh, the pricing has gone up a little bit. But I tell you, if it motivates my class and my kids and makes my life easier because I'm not tracking them down for things like missing assignments, then is that, that just might be a well-made a well investment into it. Is it appropriate for elementary school? You know, I'm looking at the characters, and it was actually designed for high school. I'm teaching sixth grade, and I kind of thought maybe it was borderline for sixth grade, maybe, maybe fifth. I think you need to look at it and just use your own judgment on that. One of the characters does hold a knife, and that really bothered me because um, I like our schools to be a nonviolent place. Although in the descriptions of the characters, he is described as a um, as a protector and as a hunter. So I think I'm okay with that. I think that's all right. I've talked to a couple people who are using it, and and they've said really good things about it. And one of them, you know, I was concerned about families, uh, kids that come from more conservative families who might have uh, trouble with that. And I don't know how to say that in an uh, appropriate way, but I hope I did. Um, but I talked to a friend of mine who actually teaches in a Christian school, and she says they have not had any trouble with, with any parents complaining about it. I haven't heard anybody that I've talked to about it say that anybody has complained about it. So, um, so that's my thought, Rosina, about using in the elementary school. Um, has anyone used Classcraft? Um, I'd love to hear what you think about it. Rosina says, it, it might be traumatizing for a child to see the main character die. Yes, and I think that's something that uh, it is something you need to consider as being appropriate. They are um, given you know, life points. I think the kids into fifth and sixth grade get that whole concept of life, you know, having lives in a game because they are most likely playing games and they see that so they understand it's the character not them and the teamwork you know think how empowering that is when your five teammates resurrect you with their life points i mean that's pretty empowering if you were feeling down because you died you just had five people come to your rescue so i think that's kind of cool uh rosina says i would not use this in an elementary setting yeah, and I think that you definitely need to look at that and consider your age appropriateness. Like I said, I thought sixth grade probably would be okay. And I've heard people using it in sixth grade. Uh, parents might not agree with it. Um, just some things to consider. I think it's really important to consider all aspects of, of what you're going to use in your classroom. Oh, um, Carrie, good question. She says, what LMS are you using? I'm trying to get started with gamification next year. The, ta the, the task seems daunting. Um, I, the, an LMS, for those of you that may not know, is a learning management system, and there's different ones. For example, um, Moodle is one that we're probably familiar with. Um, um, darn it, my mind, I know five of them and my mind comes blank right, right now, but a learning management system, uh, this is not, Classcraft is not a learning management system. It's a behavior management system that would be parallel to Class Dojo. And somebody was asking me the other day if they thought about Classcraft in, you know, third or fourth grade, and I thought, you know, one cool thing is if the elementary students are using Class Dojo, it's nice for the upper students in sixth and seventh and eighth grade to have something different than continuing to use class dojo for the seventh year in a row. So 
I think that aspect of something different is kind of cool for the kids. So, and I'm not actually using an LMS. I'm going to be using Google Drive as a way of organizing my, my lessons and my lesson planning and my uh, long-term planning in my classroom. So I'm not actually going to be using an LMS. Um, Google Classroom is not really an LMS. It's just a way of giving assignments to kids and collecting them and grading them. An LMS is a little more encompassing than that. It allows you to give assessments, grade assessments, schedule activities and whatnot, a little more in more detail than Google Classroom. But the nice thing about Google Classroom, it's, it's pretty easy to use and it's, you can learn it pretty quickly. All right, here's some other comments. Um, does it say die? I thought it says fall in battle. Amy, I think you're right. I do think it says fall in battle. Uh, that's my adult version of die. So yeah, I think you're right. Uh, which may not be as, as bad as dying. Um, people say that class craft is class dojo's big brother, right? I haven't heard that, but that's what I thought when I, I see it as class dojo being maybe more in the, in the lower grades and then something different in the upper grades when they get there. Does this link work for you? I put that up there. Um, for you to copy. So, Amy, have you been using Class Dojo? She says, I think it says fall in battle. Yes, I think you're correct about that. Um, Class Dojo now has group points. Maybe this will work better for elementary. Yes, and you know, that's that's a cool thought, Jennifer, because I think though with those group points, I had just heard about that yesterday, but I think with the group points, that you could use that to gamify your classroom if you're doing group points. You could do the same thing where you have teams of four kids, maybe in elementary, you would want smaller teams, teams of four kids, and they can earn uh, group points that way. That, that would be a cool way to gamify the elementary classroom. I like that. And then from there, you can work in the classroom um, badging system, maybe to go with the points or, or something of that, that nature. Oh, I like that. Um, let's see. I don't see any more new. I see we have 13 viewers now joining our chat. If you haven't introduced yourself, go ahead. I may have missed some people, but I was just trying to point out where people are from. I think it's kind of neat to see for EdCamp Global where people are joining in from. I'm um, just scanning through the comments here. Oh, here's one. Uh, Rosina just posted this one a, a while ago and I missed it, but Prodigy Game. We have a teacher that was using Prodigy Games last year at one of our schools and the kids absolutely loved it. And I'm not super familiar with it, but I believe it's content games in uh, math and language arts and the kids play and they earn points and they go on little quests and that kind of thing. Very fun for the kids, they really like that. Uh, Rosina uses Edmodo. Edmodo is a great tool. Um, Rosina, can you give us insight how you're using Edmodo or how you could use Edmodo to gamify the classroom? So I think we've covered class craft pretty well. Um, if anybody has anything to add, please do that, and I will go through and read. Um, Amy says, I have not used Class Dojo. I teach high school, and I worried that Class Dojo would seem too juvenile. I plan to use Class Craft this year. Previously, I used Excel spreadsheets, and that was a bit cumbersome. Oh, Amy, you're going to love this. So uh, we have a high school teacher that does use Class Dojo. But one of the ways that's really cool to use Class Dojo is when you're doing literature and you're reading a book, is set up the characters in Class Dojo. So make a Class Dojo for the characters in your book. So then you give plus and minus points to the class characters depending on the events in the book, and you can track the events. And you can decide how you, what criteria that you're giving the points on. 
um, depending on the theme of the book, perhaps. But that's kind of a fun way to use class dojo in, in a different way. Um, the teacher who is um, Brian Starchman at our high school, he, oh, I hope he doesn't mind I mention his name, but I don't think he does. He's, he uses class dojo um, for behavior for his kids, and they love it. And he's, he's up there wheeling and dealing, five points for you, good answer, you know, and the kids, they just eat it up. So I think it depends how you roll it out at that level. But I also think that the high school kids would really like class craft. Um, what I wonder is if kids are using class craft in six classes, you know, how, how that works for them from their point of view if they're doing that in six classes, you know, if it becomes so popular that everybody's using it. I just wonder. But, but um, surely other things will be developed and then we can give kids more choices. Um, I teach physics. Amy says I teach physics. But I like the idea of events and characters. Hmm. I have to think how you could use that in physics. I don't know how you would use it in physics. I don't know enough about physics, I guess. Um, I have to think about that one. Ten marks. Um, ten marks. Ten, you know, I've heard a little bit about ten marks. I don't know a lot about it. Uh, if you'd like to share... Uh, Rosina, I'd be happy to read it. Um, okay. Uh, Rosina says, I upload videos based on my teaching and then I like kids to do, I like kids to different videos. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. I like kids to different websites that ties in with my lessons. However, I'm looking for free sites that let me check the children's progress over time besides academics. I also use 10 marks from Amazon. If anyone have, has any suggestions for her, please share. I upload videos based on my teaching and then I like kids to different websites that tie in with my lessons. However, I'm looking for free sites that let me check the children's progress. Um, Schoology might be, that's another LMS. Schoology might be a good place for you because I think you can link the videos into Schoology and it's free and you could track their progress over time in Schoology. And I have not used Schoology myself, but I've, I've heard a lot about it. And I think that might do what you want to do. Um, uh, Maria, Maria, tell us where you are from. And it's okay that you're late. We're glad to have you join in anyway. Um, Rosita says, a math-based site tied to Common Core, and it has websites and tutorials, and the kids take quizzes. Okay, cool. That sounds really good. Uh, do I know any games to support English as a foreign language? Oh, I do not offhand um i seems like i've come across something in the past and i can't remember and i hate when that happens um hmm, if anybody has any suggestions for her please feel free to chime in amy says i plan to create a story around an evil misunderstood character who is disrupting the town and the students will have to use their physics to foil his plans and this way i hope to partner with the community Oh, Amy, I really want to hear how that works out because that sounds really cool. Yesterday, and I, I was hoping that um, Victor was going to join us today, but I don't see him in the chat. But Victor, um, Victor was telling me yesterday that he uses gamification in his high school PE class by setting up a camping environment. And I didn't get to hear a lot about it, but the kids come to, um, to class and the challenges for PE are set up about camping challenges, like they have to do certain things to set up a tent. And, they, and I, I don't know how he ties that into the physicalness with running and whatnot, but somehow he does and getting uh, the stuff they need for fishing. And it just sounded really interested. Uh, Victor, um, and I'm going to spell his last name, and you guys can look for him if you have questions about that. Or, you know, can I? Yeah, I'm going to spell it. Victor, M-A-N, 
R I Q U E Z. So uh, if you want to look for his name, I think he's on Twitter somewhere, but I, I don't have his Twitter handle. Um, oh, front row ED. Rosina is sending that site. Um, here, Walt Hebron says the five most commonly used mechanics in gamification are points, badges, levels, leaderboards, and challenges. Good point, Walt. There we go. Let's think about those for a minute. So these are the elements of gamification. Getting points, earning badges, leveling up leaderboards so they can compare how they're doing, and challenges. Yeah. And I see that in games, uh, challenges. If you, if you get a challenge, you unlock something or you uh, give yourself a new tool that you can use or hints that you can use. Thanks, Walt, for putting that in there. Um, Rosina says, I'm not looking, oops, wrong one. Let's say Rosina here says, I'm not looking for a platform to save things, but I'm looking for websites with games based on content areas where progress can be tracked. Um, I do know um, for uh, maybe for your grade level, ah, Jennifer just put that, you took the words out of my mouth, Jennifer, when that popped up. She says, Moby Max uh, has both English and math game-like activities with badges. And... And I'm sorry, I got distracted here for a second. And um, ScoopPad is another one, although I've used both of them extensively, and um, they both have, um, you know, like everything, they both have uh, positive, you know, strengths and whatnot. Um, I did like MobyMax. MobyMax has a lot of great stuff. And in MobyMax, you can actually um, do writing assessments and push those out to the kids. Um, Um, hold on just a minute. Okay, so, um, uh, Rosina says Classcraft does have analytics to help track progress in a game, depending on how you use it, that could help you. I'm going to stop screen sharing for just a minute. And, um, Let's see, I'm gonna add Victor to our chat, if I can. Okay, let's see Victor if, let's see if I'm gonna send Victor an invite and Victor, I'm gonna see if I can get you in here into the chat and Let's see if that will work. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to our screen. And I have a couple more questions. So let's see if we can pull up another one or two here. So, um, Lexica, this is um, put out by the company that currently has, um, okay, hold on, I'm gonna stop my screen share because my screen didn't come up the way I wanted it to. Stop, let's try that again. Here we go. So Lexica, uh, they put out what is the Oregon Trail. Do you remember that program from way back when, the Oregon Trail? And this just really caught my interest, Lexica. It's completely a game-based curriculum, and it is something that you subscribe to and that uh, maybe districts would be willing to, to use to replace textbooks with. I don't know um, where your district stands on that kind of stuff. Um, but Lexica, no, it is not free. Lexica is not free. But it really caught my interest. If you want something to look into, 
and just know I have no ties into any companies. I'm not receiving money. I'm not trying to promote any specific company, but just sharing ideas. And uh, but Lexica, it's it's got the curriculum embedded in it, and then the kids go on quests to gain skills, and then they come back and use what they get from the quest, the tools they use to um, unlock different levels in the game. It just looked really engaging, and their video here on their website just looked really cool to me. So something that I wanted to explore and to see if my district would be willing to explore. I think that it would be a real great way to reach kids and uh, the kids that they interviewed anyway. And I know that's, you know, their promo film, but the kids that they had interviewed on this little video just seemed like they were really into the game and so much so that they're playing it at home. And I think that's really cool when we don't have to assign kids homework because they want to do the homework and they just take it home and do it. And also another one here. Uh, um, let's see, looking for my little picture for it is uh, Socrative is uh, another uh, way to bring some game elements into the classroom for student response system. It's kind of cool. All right, let's go back to another better question. And um, we didn't talk a lot about, oh, we did, we did talk about that. Um, we talked about badges. Uh, we talked about supporting the uh, weaker students. And we shared about that. So, oh, and we're, so we've kind of gone through the questions, I think, without necessarily trying. So, I don't know if Victor got in yet. I was curious uh, for him to share about what he was doing in his PE class with the group. Is this presentation available on Twitter? Um, you, you mean, I'm thinking that you mean the, this Google Hangout? I think the Google Hangout will be available on YouTube. So um, it's called EdCamp Global uh, Game-Based Classroom. So I think if you search for it, this will be archived on Google if you want to come back to it and listen to it again. Um, any other ideas? for different free platforms that offer game-based learning in math or ELA. So if anybody has any, please share. We'd love to hear from you. And um, hope that uh, you follow on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter address is at M Heburn, H-E-B as in boy, E-R-N. And if you hashtag it, um, um, gamification and then other people can go on and look and follow kind of follow the group on Twitter so that you can continue sharing with each other and that would be really awesome as you find new things it's it's good to share them and share them out so we can keep keep uh, our learning curve moving along all right providing badges I think um, we're about to wrap up does anyone have any last comments or questions or anything they'd like to pose onto the chat? And I'd like to thank Amy and Victor for joining us. I had asked them earlier to join us to add their insight to the conversation. So thank you very much. And thank you to everybody else who joined. It was wonderful participating in EdCamp Global. A lot of fun. I think uh, if you haven't been to a physical EdCamp, uh, in-person kind of ed camp. I hope that you'll seek one out and find one because they're a lot of fun. And, and I think the best part is teachers uh, taking on the learning for themselves and, and choosing what they want to learn about and following the pathways of learning that they're interested. We all came into teaching because we had passions for teaching and we had a passion for what we do. And I think ed camps are a great way to allow teachers to increase their, um, their passion in, in whatever area you so choose. All right. Um, Maria says, I love what you said about not having to assign homework. Yeah, me too. I mean, that, that would be my ideal is to get to the point in the classroom where uh, the kids are actually asking to do their homework. And I have a, 
uh, some ideas for that. One thing I'm going to try this year is 20 time and uh, let the kids work on some great projects. If you want to look that up, uh, look for Kevin Brookhauser.com. He has a lot of information on 20 time and he has a book called 20 time, but that's a great way I think to get the kids to buy into the project that they're working on. And when they do that, I'm hoping that they'll do that. They'll look into doing their homework and working on it on their own without having it to be assigned. Uh, thank you, Maria, for joining. It was great having you. And this was a lot of fun. I, I hope you guys got something out of it. And um, and just thank you so much. Thank, uh, Jennifer says, thank you. Uh, let's have a rock star year gamifying. Yes, Jennifer. And, and I hope you guys will connect on Twitter and let me know how it's going because I would love to hear back from you and and hear what you're using and new things that you're finding and new ideas that you have because that's how we build what we do is as we build this community and then we start sharing out over and over and over again and we just keep building ourselves up uh I've got something Amy says, thank you for getting and um oh and just thank you so much thank uh jennifer says thank you uh, let's have a rock star. Yes, Jennifer. Right. And, and I hope you guys will connect on Twitter and let me know how it's going because I would love to hear back from you. Victor, I'm getting some feedback. Is there any chance that you have um, headphones? And new ideas uh, that you have. Yes. That's how we build what we do is as we build this community and then we start sharing out over and over and over again. Are getting and we just keep building ourselves up. Okay. If you guys want to hang in for a couple of minutes, uh, Victor just showed it, just oh. came into the chat. And Victor, I want you to share what you're doing in your PE class because I just thought that was so awesome and uh, we might be able to glean some of that for our regular no, classroom. So I, I don't know that we have any PE teachers here, but we'd love to hear what you're doing. So go ahead. Okay, uh, new to this, Victor Manriquez here. I teach out in Sanger Unified. And um, basically the concept of gamification is something that I started exploring back in 2000. 2001 after my first year of teaching where kids didn't like PE. I said, oh, it has to be fun otherwise. How am I going to teach biomechanics and fitness components <laughs> if their hearts are totally closed? So what I, I consulted with a friend of mine, uh, Ron says Noriega. He's an international uh, painter, fine artist, uh, graduate out of UCLA. And so he taught for 30 some odd years at the university level. And I asked him, I have this problem. Kids don't like PE. Can you help me? He's like, of course. He goes, why did you get into it? I said, well, camping. You know, yes, I did play baseball and other sports, but I fell in love with camping outdoors and the ambiance of, you know, fishing, hiking, campfires, uh, orienteering. And he says, well, you got to take all of your students there. So we're going to take 400, 500 students up to the mountains every day in a bus. It just didn't seem realistic. It's like, no, you actually, do you go to China for Chinese food? I said, no, I go to the, the Golden Dragon right here down the road. He says, of course, of course, the food comes to you. So he says, you, we need to bring the camping to the school. And so upon that idea, I think what the conversations I've been listening to on here, or well, at least I've, I'm hearing your voice, Marlena, and you're doing a great job facilitating here. Different oh, folks are coming up with ideas to make the class like a game. Of course, I don't have the technology outside. Therefore, uh, what I've gotten a chance to do is create, sev uh, divided up the students into groups. And from there, each group has uh, certain responsibilities for leadership, a leadership piece, uh, a, a collaboration piece where they have to interact with each other. They each take turns being leaders and leading their small group. And also the whiteboard itself, there's a, just a small eight and a half by 11 whiteboard. We have uh, one group that's in charge of giving points. So points can be earned by uh, listening, uh, you know, being considerate or kind, uh, knowing the answer to a task or, or a question, uh, also collaborating as a group and as a group coming up with the answer to the question. And it, and it can be anything from 
you know, what the date is to, uh, you know, what does aerobic mean, the definition of a word, and then an example of aerobic exercise. And so students themselves give, uh, they can earn the points, and I assign a student leader from each group, or one group gives points. So basically the class sort of runs by itself. Eventually, the group that has the most points uh, for that day <clears throat> earns the right to wear a parameter. Oh, I'm wearing my parameter. And so, you know, I, you know, Marlena mentioned the concept of giving badges. So I give a trucha stick or, or a trucha means trout. It's the name of the camp. It's our state fish in California, the golden trout. So I give a, a sticker to each person in the group, usually five or six kids, class of 32 to 35. And the next, that group that earns the most points, they wear this parameter that that tracks their steps, distance, calories. And they also have goal settings. The following class, when they put these on, and the goal could be, a, you know, the calories of a cheeseburger, you know, which might be like 500 and some odd calories. So the group puts the parameter on. Of course, they reset it, and I double check that they do. And their objective is to move, 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 of course. Another gamification with technology, uh, the parameter. And if they're able to uh, reach, burn 520 calories, uh, then they earn extra points. So there's the gamification concept. And so that's that's what I get a chance to do. Also integrate other things like music. All games have music. They have great music too. And uh, of course, one group are there. They are the DJs. They pick music. I have to I have to censor the music for lyric and other things. So if it passes my uh, uh, you know uh, censoring, then I upload it to an iPad. An, an iPod, sorry, and the DJs play and stop music, and they have they could take suggestions from students to hear what kind of music they to know what kind of music they want to listen to, and so anyhow that that's the concept overall concept that we're working on. So there's music, there's flags, every unit regardless of what it is, along you know adhering to the state and national frameworks for physical education um, bring, comes with different types of music and, uh, and as, uh, as well as uh, we modification of the activity to have a game like uh, game like uh, atmosphere where students both they lead, they have to uh, collaborate, be creative and sometimes most of the time do critical thinking. So I believe those are some of the components that are from this Trucha Camp physical education class that I, I created with the help of my friend, Ramses Noriega. And you, could, you guys could look him up on Google to find out a little bit more about him, a retired professor at a UCLA, great, great educator. And, uh, and so that's, that's what I've gotten a chance to work on. So the gamification concepts you're talking about here, like how do I... Uh, adopt some of these concepts and implement them in physical education. That's why I'm here. Well, thank you, Victor, for sharing that. Uh, that's really interesting, and I and I like the the way that you've incorporated that into your classroom for PE because I think a lot of times people look at other classes like PE and maybe voc ed. And some of those classes is kind of being out of reach of concepts like gamification or the other, the other things that maybe teachers are doing more uh, easily in self-contained or core subject areas. So I, I think that's really good to take, you know, to take those concepts and apply them in a way that's fun and different and motivating for the kids. So thank you for sharing. Uh, you're welcome. How do I see the chat? Can everybody hear me, or, or is it just you that? Can I think everybody hear can hear me? you. We're, yeah, we're about ready to close up. I do have one uh -huh. comment here that I wanted to read to you. It says, 
wow, what an eye-opening question. Do you go to China for Chinese food? <laughs> and, and that is, uh, and you know what, Maria, I just uh, saw as I was looking through the chat, is from Argentina. She's uh, uh, joined us from the farthest away. And um, yeah, she's right. I mean, when we think about that, we have to bring these things into the classroom because we cannot take the kids halfway around the world. And that's one great thing with technology is we're making the world so much smaller. That's true. We are able to integrate uh, you know, ideas and sessions like this where we can find out how we can have a, a, a greater impact in the lives of kids, right? Empowering them and also mm -hmm. using the technology, like you mentioned, to integrate fun because as kids, whatever we did that was fun, we still do, right, as adults. Right. So we want to make math right. fun, reading fun, exercise fun, you know, geography fun, art fun, etc. So thank you for the time, and I'm glad I was able to connect on here. I've been listening for a while. So I, you great. know, I didn't Thanks. catch, uh, and Julio was going to join us today, and I, I didn't see him pop up either. So, but thank you very much. I think we're about ready to be done. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in. All right, bye, Victor. <laughs> bye, bye. We'll be in touch. Okay.